Yeah, it was Max going on these days. Clearly? Yeah, he's doing all right. Really? No, good. He's doing all right. He was threatening okay. to come tonight, but he's not so. <laughs> You want to say something? Pardon? You want to say something? Yeah. An introduction or whatever? You want an introduction? Yeah. Well, cat's taken over tonight. Oh, I'm, having, I'm having a rest. There's an introduction. Yeah. It's the best introduction you can get. Very creative. Yeah, it's I'm not talking yeah. to anybody. I'm not talking to any mind. Come on, you, what's next? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to that I am that I am. You really understand that? Do I really understand it? Yeah. yeah, I think so. I do. So maybe you should just stick to one pointer until everyone understands it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, which pointer? No, no. Yeah, I don't know. One? Just pick one. That's all. That's what I'm looking for you right <laughs> now. Well, there's nobody <laughs> here to talk to. Right? You're not talking to anybody. You're not talking, talking to anyone. Right. I'm talking that I am, that I am, which That's is the right. intelligence energy and the, the nothingness and the everything that I am, oh. which is you too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see you. Yeah, sorry, you just That's kind of good. blended in. I'm sorry. Just so how well do you know about it? You are being interviewed now. I'm being <laughs> interviewed. <laughs> how well do you know it? Do you know it as well as Bob? No. No, I don't. That's why I like to hear him talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. what is the difference between his knowing and your knowing? He's more, much more experienced. And, um, and I think that there's still some storying happening, which to me means that if there's storying happening, there's an identification of an I that has a story. And I could be wrong, but it happens once a year, you know. Today could be the day. Sorry. Who is this myself? There is no self to identify. Mm -hmm. But there, there does appear to be identifying sometimes, I suppose. If I'm, why? If, 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 if something's appearing, why lock into the appearance? Why lock into the appearance? It's hypnotic. It's fun, I guess. It's it's a habit. Um, there's a, those those are my reasons why, I guess. Who's reasons? Myself. Nobody's. Nobody, you say nobody. That's <laughs> okay. There's somebody than myself that you believe in. Your heart. Yeah. Anyway, you're doing great. No, no, no. You're doing great. I want. I, I would love to hear. I'm going well enough. I don't have to tell anybody anything. I'm right. Hmm. Yeah, but you kind of happen to, to be doing it for most of your life, so it means yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm quite safe where I am. You care, <laughs> you know. You care. You're so good at it. <laughs> What am I talking about? What am I telling you? <laughs> and everybody is that. Why aren't you good at it? Why, why, why rely on me? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, okay, so, uh, so if you're really here, that there is, uh, how do you say? I'm not speaking to anybody. I'm not speaking to any mind. One way to look at this is see if you are the body or the mind. Because this is not who is he speaking to. So if the body hears that, can actually body hear anything if the mind is off? Like can the body hear anything if, if you are in coma or your brain death? You can't even say what is hearing or if it is hearing. Although I've heard people say that when they're in comas, they do have memories and stuff like that. But yeah, memories. Yeah, sure, maybe. But the body itself doesn't really hear when the body is dead. Right, right. It's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not hearing. Yes. Now, what is the mind? Can the mind hear at all? The mind is a stream of thought. The thought, the mind, can't even hear. It needs the ears. <laughs> so can the body-mind actually, body-mind, hear? Because if it can, that's fantastic. But this is not what he is talking to. If the body-mind can hear something, or the entity, or the individual that you believe yourself to be, if that can hear, okay, let it hear. But Bob is not speaking to that one. Right. He's speaking to something else, something beside, beyond, above, whatever, something else, something else, not the body-mind. Right. 
So if there is an individual or a body mind listening, let it be. Just ignore it. But there is something else that is meant to hear it. Does it understand words? This other thing? <laughs> you tell me. I, I'd imagine it wouldn't. Yes, so this something else is expressing, this emptiness is expressing as forms, is expressing as biocomputer, as radio, as clouds, as volcanoes, as cats, dogs. So it has every possible capacity through its expression. But without the body, obviously, it doesn't really have the, even the capacity of hearing physical words. But is it really the words that are being conveyed or transmitted? Because there is something about resonance, not necessarily words. There was a guy who used to come here, the Japanese guy, on the beginning, he didn't really speak much of an English. And he would sit here because he would know that there is something that doesn't even need to understand words, that resonates. So whether that's something, actually, to be precise, that's not a thing. No, I think you've Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the mm -hmm. mm. The, the something beyond the body-mind is a limitation of the language. Mm. There is not a thing. It is not that when Bob says, I'm talking to the I am that I am, or to consciousness, or to sense of presence, is that sense a thing? Can you grab it? Can you define the limits of that thing? You can't. So it's not really a thing. But because the language doesn't really, you know, we didn't develop vocabulary to communicate it in a, in a way that, in, a, in any better way. So this is, so this is the point. The body-mind, if it hears it, let it hear it, let it play with it. The mind will take it for a trip, will twist it, will, uh, you know, interpret it, will have a story about it. Doesn't matter, let it be, let it be the background, the commentary under the, the, the movie or subtitles, whatever, it doesn't matter. So whether there is a mind understanding, grasping, getting it, doesn't matter. Because it's not the mind that it is supposed to wake up. It's not, well, that one is not really asleep. The one is not even a one. <laughs> so it is, the, the conversation is from oneself to oneself. It's just the one life essence expressing through this body and through that body. And the conversation is that very life essence, the awareness of presence or the knowing that you are, communicating with the same knowing that is everywhere, that is not separated from anything. Now, because the words, you know, that's, that's how, the, how the computer is being programmed. The words are being used. Words are really just a medium to transmit the proper frequency of that certainty of being. Because the certainty of being, everyone is certain that they are. They know that they are. But nobody pays attention. Nobody cares. So the whole attention is completely distorted into the appearance, into the illusion, into a dream. The, the pleasures, the, the senses, the, the stories in the head. So the being is there, it's unobscured, it can't be touched. It's, it's there as much Julia's being or your being is, is as evident and, and as certain as Bob's being. There is no difference. So where is the difference now? If Bob is, he has absolute certainty that that very sense of presence or being is the only reality worthy of your attention. And there are things popping up, the dinner that he doesn't want to join, <laughs> or, or, or the... <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't plan that. <laughs> it just came up. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to. <laughs> anyway, that stuff just comes up, but this is part of the appearance, this is part of the dream. And the awareness of presence or the knowing that you are is not forgotten. It's, it's, still, it's still the most important and the most, the sweetest, the most beautiful thing because it is real, because it's there all the time, it's totally reliable, it's it's, it's real. This is the reality. But the way we were conditioned, we were conditioned to completely ignore that. 
ignore the one thing that is actually completely reliable and undeniable and get distracted with the dream, you know, just change the movie, just put another movie, just get some music, do something, something, because, well, and, and, it's, and it's justifiable, because we were conditioned to leave that sense of presence, that gut instinct of being, and that heart knowing, and go to the head, and run away from, from whatever is happening in the moment, into the story about it. And then as we got accustomed to it, of course, that is almost like an addiction. One could call it addiction because the flavors that mind is offering is so much more intense than just plain blunt sort of a being. Then, of course, we want a more dramatic, more interesting, more pleasurable or unpleasant, whatever, because sensations or stories, because it makes us feel alive and it distracts us from the sense of void or sense of unworthiness, which is a byproduct of, of identifying or defining ourselves in the terms of mind as an object. So that's, uh, that's how it come about. So now as, as, an, as an object, I'm inferior, I'm unworthy, and now I need to sedate myself. I need to run away and distract myself from that unpleasant feeling. So I'll go and get myself busy with the, with the movie in the head, with the stories completely changing one after another, because it feels kind of less painful for a moment, but for how long? So now we kind of learn to distract ourselves continuously so much that I've seen people who were coming and listening to Bob's spiel a hundred times, and they still didn't know why they were coming, because there was nothing really that could actually take them a little bit above the stream of thought. It's, it's just, it's amazing the questions people ask after 20 years of coming here. It, it happens because, because the veil is so thick, the distraction from that basic space, basic stillness is so, is so intense. I was talking to a friend yesterday, she called, she was in trouble, she said, it was such a gorgeous, beautiful, warm day, and she was out in the park uh, walking her dog. Sweet little uh, schnauzer. Blue sky, warm, nice, pleasurable air, and off she went. And she says, I can't appreciate it, because everywhere I look, there are these huge posters. You should be doing something productive. You are unworthy. You don't deserve it. I say, okay, but who's, who's reading them? Who is looking at them? Ah, oh, yeah, well. She may stop, she may pause for a moment, for a minute. But we were on the phone for over an hour because, you know, they would, they would come, they would stop for a minute. And then they would come from another corner, from another corner. And these things are so believable, they are so realistic that the one who is watching or the one who is aware of the content is, is completely buried under the heaviness of those statements. They're so heavy. Yes, yeah, like anxiety, depression, the, the shame that is almost suicidal. That's heavy. Now, she was saying, okay, so now when you ask me a question, okay, I can see, I, I can actually see that they are not who I am because I'm looking from the distance at all these posters all around. Yeah, cool. But how long is she able to do it before the heaviness reaches back again? And well, it just feels so real. It feels, well, of course. I mean, you know, if you take take the conditioning and she's over 50 so half a century of believing the story she had about herself and now the thought like this comes up and that thought has the emotional component you know when the thought I, i'm unworthy i don't deserve to be here i don't deserve to be alive you know of course the cortisol runs through the body it makes the fight flight effect all the blood goes out of the inner organs and the, and the guts it goes to hands and legs and she's ready to Whatever, it's, it's, just the, it's just the chemical reactions in the machinery, in the, in the biocomputer. 
So it feels real. She says, I can feel it physically. Oh, absolutely, of course. And I gave her an example about the movie that I say, you know, when you are watching a movie that you really like, and there, there is a hero in the movie, and that, and well, she's a lady, so probably a lady. But if you could also think about the movie that you can identify with, with the hero of the movie, that you actually, when, when they run away or they have love story or they are sad, or you completely forget that you are watching it and you are completely with the, with the hero, with the character. And gosh, don't you cry on the movie or don't you get anxious when something is going to go wrong? There is no idea that I am watching this. It's just completely reflecting what is going on. And now, as she's watching it, I'm asking her, and this is a, a question worthy of contemplating on, that person in the movie, what can that person possibly do to wake up and become you, the one who's watching? Or maybe there's 10 million people watching at the same time. What that character can do to wake up and become you? Absolutely nothing. There is absolutely nothing the character can do to become the one who's sitting in a cinema. And even the one who's sitting in front of the TV or in a cinema, can they wake up to become the emptiness? No way. It's impossible. The character is in an absolutely hopeless situation. There is nothing the character can do. The only way out of the character is to actually see that the, you have never even been in the character. That's the only way out to realize that you're not in it. You think you are a person, you are a character, and you are getting running away from vil whatever villains or, or enemies. How can you run away from the TV? How can you jump off the TV screen and become the one who's sitting? Ridiculous, absurd. So that much one can do to wake up. That much people who come here and listen and think, oh, no, yeah, I'm not there yet. I, I didn't completely wake up yet, but a little bit more and I will wake up. No, that character can never, ever wake up. Not in a million years, not in a million satsangs. It is waking up from the character. And this is not happening by any doing of the character. So what, what, is it, what is it that the character can do in a situation like this? Like now, I'm not talking to anybody, I'm not talking to any mind. And there is a body-mind that is listening and thinking, yeah, all right, it makes sense, so what can I do? What? You're fucked. You're fucked, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes, accept it. Mm -hmm. If you accept it fully, that you can't jump off as the character of the TV screen. You can't. No matter what you can. There's just no way. If you accept that you fucked completely and fully, you give up. Whatever. Okay, fine. There's absolutely zilt I can do. Nothing. Relax. <sighs> if it happens or it doesn't, there's nothing I can do. Zilt. Now, Whatever is experienced through the character, by the character, is still going to be experienced, is still going to be happening, pleasure, pain, interest, drama, whatever. But now, if you really, really prior, pri <laughs> prioritize, prioritize, mm -hmm. yeah, even as a character, if the character have the fantasy about waking up or have the fantasy about getting out of itself, which is a ridiculous fantasy. It can't happen, never, ever. But if there is that seeming last desire happening in the character, that yes, this is important, yes, this is what I want, this is, this is why, I, why I was born. Just because this is earnestness of which Nisargadatta was saying. If this is that love for the truth in that seeming character, Oh, if this of if if there is a pain and exhaustion of suffering in, in this seeming character, now the seeming character can seemingly surrender. You want to you want to do something? Get out of the way. Surrender. 
Surrendering is not act, it's not an action. Surrendering is complete inaction. Like now, I want to do, do anything, I'm ready to do anything, I'll do whatever. Like God, tell me what to do, I'll do anything. And now the God says, surrender, do nothing. Absolute zilts, nothing, you don't exist. The closest you get to non-existence is by doing nothing. Like if, if you want to do something, you want to be a doer. Well, good luck, have fun. <laughs> but if you really want to realize the truth of the spontaneous expression of life without any agency needed on the way, that just do nothing and let that life express as it does. Just see how it is already happening. See how the seeing is already happening. Nobody does it. Nobody does a see, the, the seeing. Nobody does the digestion. It's happening. Like, yeah, nobody grows the grass. It's happening. Nobody blows the wind. It's like the whole universe is making things happen. The, the life, the energy, the om omnipotence, omnipotence, the total power is expressing as every single thing in the world is replacing cells, is, is speaking, is doing everything. And now this omnipotence. Yeah, just, just see how it is already effortle effortlessly so. Now, as the individual, you can't even see. <laughs> but if you're dreaming, you can see. Just keep dreaming and see. See how without the individual, without any agency, without anyone who would have any influence or any action, life goes on. How without any action or any involvement, thoughts come up. Actions happen through the body. There is nobody there who needs to look, keep an eye on it, control it or choose it or will it or wish it. And it's already happening. So really it is just to, just to build up the conviction because all of you have the conviction strong enough to know that the individual is a fiction. You are not among this who, who come here and after 100 satsangs or 20 years still, still don't quite get that there is about no self here, all that talk. That there is no need for agency. You know there is no need for agency. Now, I think I heard you, Robin, saying before the satsang, I just kind of, I was preparing mm. vitamin C for Bob. Maybe you should drink it. That you kind of build the evidence of... Yeah. yeah. That's sort of how it seems to be. Yeah, tell us about it. This is, this is kind of a nice... Nice way of thinking. Yeah, well, it's just that's the way it seems to be to me. Is that, like, I see that the the self is an illusion, not the personal self is an illusion, but I get locked back into it all the time. But it seems that um, I'm seeing more and more evidence that shows that it's false. So it's building up over time this evidence against it. Beautiful. So, I mean, that's how it seems to me to be what's happening. I mean, it, it's a gradual process, not a all mm. of a sudden thing, but that's what seems to happen to me anyway. But that's fantastic. And mm. that evidence, if you could share the evidence, there are people watching there from somewhere, from mm. Europe, I guess. You know, that, that evidence may actually support their mm. seeking too. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I have seen in my thoughts that the thoughts refer back to themselves. Yeah. And it self-reinforces the idea of a separate entity mm. in the way it refers back to itself. And I mean, you can see that pops up all the time. And it just, you can see it happening. Yeah. You can see how it happens, that you're being... Can you give it, us an example of a thought? Like... Oh, I don't know, actually, <laughs> on the spur of the moment, but no. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it is, it is really, this is... The whole gathering is really mm. about now, mm. just exploring and helping each other to stabilize. Yeah. Because everyone kind of get it that, you know, nobody is assuming that, yeah, oh yeah, sure, I'm leaving myself or I'm beating my heart. No. Mm. But now find the stabilize in this, like really grow in the, in, in the certainty, like dispel all the invitation for the you know for the rights that the mind takes you know gosh i must have been dreaming because it kind of i remember when i was seeking it was the the moments of absolute clarity 
And the next moment, ah, oh, shit, there's nothing in it. It's all dream. It's all, it's, it's all nightmare. And there is a me and the me is suffering and I can't wake up from it. And it's just hopeless. And then again, opening. <sighs> so this, this moments when it kind of seems to like the, the clouds seem to go away and you see a little bit of a sunlight and then the clouds cover it up again. This is the, this is the some sort of a transition period when you still think you are between the clouds and the sun. When you still, when you don't really abide in the, in, in, in the certainty that you aren't between the clouds and the sun. You are the sky itself. I mean, what I seem to see too is I get um, the periods between thoughts are getting a lot bigger. Mm. Oh. So I just sit without thinking lots of the time now. It That's, just yeah. happens. Mm. And there's nothing you can do about it. It just happens that way. So. And it's not a problem, is it? No, no it's not. It's no. not boring or it's no. not discomf uh, uncomfortable? Mm. Mm. No, so I find a lot now I can just listen to somebody talking mm -hmm. without a thought process analysing what's being said. You just listen. Yeah. And, and that seems to be... Look, I think that, to me, is the communication between the I am to the I am that you are as well. Yes. As it's going in past the thought process. Mm. Like, it just goes in. It's not going through a, a thought process at all, so... Oh boy, what a yeah. huge difference, isn't it? Yeah. Because in the beginning, the, like initially, when we communicate, at least this is what I remember from communicating with people, I was so preoccupied with what they're going to, you know, how am I going to respond to them? What are they going to think about me? I would form the concept about the story that they are saying me. Uh, there would be a lot of commentary going on, a lot of guessing. So I wouldn't really hear much of them. Yeah. Because I would be just commenting all the time. It wouldn't give them enough space. Mm. Like when you actually give completely space for listening, mm. it doesn't really matter. There is no you in it. So it doesn't matter how they, what they're going to think about you. Mm. It just doesn't exist. That, that layer, that veil doesn't exist anymore. And the communication mm. is effortless. Well, I noticed this when I was doing a training course at work one time. And I noticed, I was thinking, and in the thinking period, I wasn't hearing what was being said, so I was missing things. Yeah. And you think, well, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So you miss most of what the communication is, because you're thinking about what they're saying. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm. And you can't really listen to them and listen to yourself at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you can't, no. Right. So now that you're listening and you're just hearing, you're, you're just listening without interpreting, yeah. you probably remember better, too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was an insight that I got back in in eighty seven when I realized that nobody ever people tell you uh you're not listening, but they don't say what it is mm. and what occurred to me is is it's simply just doing your best to understand mm. the words you're set or just hearing what they're saying without interpreting mm. or or judging mm. or saying this is right or wrong or good or yeah. bad or or I agree or disagree or thinking of your own stories or preparing your response or any of that because if I'm doing any of that if I'm interrupting it's proof that I wasn't listening yeah. I was listening to myself I have to listen to myself in order to interrupt you mm -hmm. and I think I just did that we do it all the time and that's what uh, that's also what's happen what happens uh, initially when people come here to the meetings and they, they constantly, they're listening. They're listening to Bob. They believe they may be even desperate to hear what he says. But they're completely incapable of switching off their own commentary yeah. and of stopping to compare with what I heard before, of what I knew before, or does it really match, or does it make sense? They can't. You know, there's not, it's not a bad will or anything. It's just an automatic, mechanical process that is going on. And it takes a while before this process drops off and before we actually it takes an art to be able to listen without that commentary mm. to listen with absolute curiosity just completely open like bob says heart to heart mm. when you just leave that open space and anything whatever comes is not commented is welcomed with the curiosity 
So that's uh, that's that's the listening. What you Tony was saying, where you don't really need words because you're not going to be arguing with them. You're not going to be arguing back anyway. So it's just it's being receptive to the point. It's almost like you know, like being a sponge that just <coughs> complete the receptivity because there is there is no fear anymore. There is no guard, no defenses anymore. Like when you are space, what do you need to defend? This listening, being space for listening, for hearing, it doesn't really need any sort of defenses. And that, you know, love for the truth can create that sort of a space spontaneously or acute suffering and desperation. Like, oh, it can't get any worse anymore. Like, you know, I'm on the edge of the suicide. There's nothing. I have nothing to lose. That can create that sort of a receptivity also. Oh, it may just spontaneously happen with the slow or fast process of ripening, which is, again, not done by the individual. It happens or it doesn't. <laughs> I love what you were saying, Kat. So I hadn't heard that um, analogy used before um, about the TV character. I didn't either. I just yeah. sort of came up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the exact same analogy can be applied to the dreamed, you, say, your dreamed character in a dream when, yes. you're, as, when you're asleep dreaming. Yes. Okay? And whilst you're, whilst you're asleep and you're dreaming... The character, like yourself, in that dream seems very real. Mm -hmm. And it can get affected by all sorts of things. <coughs> it can experience fear, it can experience laughter, the whole gamut. Yeah? And the sitting here in this space and expecting the me to wake up is exactly the same as the dreamed character whilst you're asleep and dreaming expecting it to be able to experience what it's like to be awake when you wake up from the dream do you see that i'm going to have to let you on that a little bit it's pretty right. so, it's, it's pre so, so you're saying that it's a, this is like the dream in the dreaming the dreaming character experiencing a wakefulness while it's dreaming. I'm keep, look, right? Yeah. There's nothing... I'm not being tricky about what I'm saying mm. at all. Just no, like, no, I'm just trying just to... Just real, real straight. Okay. And I'm talking about the dreamed character that you experience when you're in your bed at night, right. sound asleep, and dreaming. Right. Okay? There's a dreamed character in there. Uh -huh. Okay? And being here and awake, supposedly, sitting in, in this room, the exact same principle applies, but the dreamed character, whilst you're asleep, okay, and dreaming, is expecting, like the me is here now, is expecting to be able to awaken from that dream and know what it's like to be awake. Now, I don't know about you, but when I wake up from that dream, it just goes poof and it's gone. So the character in that dream cannot know what it's like to be awake. It can't. Actually, I've, I've been in a dream and realised that it's a dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's. Uh, I'll clarify <coughs> it a little bit. Just, it's not the point. just, it's not just the point. a little bit, no. because I've done lucid dream, dreaming courses and I had lucid dreaming experiences too. If you want to use that analogy, you have to imagine now you are a dream character, and of course there are dreams that everybody probably had once a life. At least psychology says so. When you're running away from someone and your legs are almost like you're going through the water, it's so hard, and you, you try to yell and the voice doesn't come out. You are having a nightmare. And in that nightmare, what is the chance that you remember that your body is lying on bed? 
asleep, not moving, you're running, your eyes are open, your dream character, your eyes are open, your ears are open, you are uh, catching the breath, it's tragic. Now, how much do you remember about the peacefully sleeping body, corpse, under the blanket, feeling the pillow on the head? Zilts. I did lucid dreaming, yes. There so is absolutely you're, you're no recollection. Yes, there is no recollection of sleeping that, body. That, imagine if you went, oh, this is, you know, realized this is a dream. Yes, yes, I did lucid dreaming. I did yeah. realize, so yes. Then no. It all changes. You, like you, asleep, you are dreaming, you woke up. Correct. But you but now are. I, yes. Oh, but when I realized I was, I was in a dream. But what do you know about the sleeping body? Oh, I don't know. That's the point. That's yeah. the point. The analogy here, same as analogy with the character in the TV. You know how the character in the TV, the little body of that person, that actor that is running there, how is that character of that body realize that it has been created by the one who looks at it or the director? How is the character in the movie going to wake up to the director or a character even in a cartoon? Well, I suppose the director could write it. Yeah, yeah, but exactly, but but it's not the character. Is the director writing it from zero? Like, imagine the character. Actually, the director is right. Uh, is drawing a cartoon. Now you have this cartoon character, drawn up the whole story that is waking up, getting a great enlightenment, but is still written by the director. How is the character that is the little comic character? going to realize the director that it has been written by someone. It's flat on the paper and there is someone in 3D writing about it. So lucid dreaming is absolutely wonderful experience, but as the analogy or the pointer in this particular situation, lucid dreaming would be to wake up as the character. Let's say you have different, you don't have a nightmare. You have a nice kind of easy stroll through the forest or whatever. And you kind of remember in your dream that you are dreaming, but you're still walking. But the dreaming body is not walking, unless you kind of having walk around the house without knowing it. My ex-husband was doing it. But usually, when you dream you are walking or flying or having sex or whatever, the body lies flat on bed. So if you would want to transition from the character running in the dream to the flat body lying in bed, if you could include the flat body lying in bed in the character, that would be the analogy. Lucid dreaming is a different story. Lucid dreaming is just like you said. If there is a character in the movie and the director told the character to become holy or saint, or the comic picture in the book <laughs> that is achieved the enlightenment because the, the one who was drawing a comic has put that in the role. So lucid dreaming is just a little bit more kind of exciting dream because the body is still dreaming. It's just the front lobe that is awakened. So there is a little bit of a memory sinking in from this character into the character in a dream. But the awareness of the body is still the awareness of the dream body. The dream body is still looking while the body in bed has closed eyes. But then you're not the body in bed anyway. No, but see if you wake up from the dream character to the body in the bed, which you are not either. But see what a big difference is completely like being in a flat land and waking up to 3D. And now, if you are, because that's what Terry was uh, pointing out, if you are waking up from the dream character to this person here, is quite similar, your relation with the dream character or the dream world is quite similar to the relation when you wake up from this. And now, oh my God, the dream may be still going on, but yes. now you yes. are not, see, you're that whole world, yeah. that you were strolling through the forest so maybe I, at I, night. I, I realized in a dream, but yes. not in this reality. Mm -hmm. But see, see, I actually like this analogy because I did lucid dreaming and because I, remembered thousands, sometimes eight, nine dreams per night. And I could see in the dreams different universes, different orders. Mm -hmm. I had different bodies. I was different species. I was different sex. Now, 
this was a this was a fantastic adventure beautiful adventure but this is still completely a dream now I was going through 10,000 years old forest with huge trunks of the trees. I was walking around pyramids. I was going in the spaceships. Where are they? Where are they now? Where are they when you wake up? So this is another face of the reality. The moment you wake up from making this world solid, very, very solid, and you realize, oh my gosh, there's nothing. It's just vibrating atom atoms, you know, energy moving and the way we're looking reassure the existence We're of it. Where are they Yeah. It's a sign. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's completely lucid, liquid, fluid. So it's, if you want to use the analogies, they're, on a, they're beautiful, but we have to actually be very, very careful with the, you know, with the limitation of analogy. Otherwise, we jump to wrong conclusions and we lost. But it's, it's always good to verify and ask, and actually the best thing, debate it. No, no, this is all wrong. Yeah, I'll show you. Please, please. Yeah, debate anything, whatever we say here, debate it. Prove it wrong, because that will do you good. And I'm nobody's going to knock me. <laughs> hmm? I'm a hopeless debater. Oh, that's a pity. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you? Joe, that, that, that I was talking with you about <coughs> in relation to the dream character in the dream. Yeah? So, our me's oh. that are sitting in this room right now expecting enlightenment is exactly the same as the dream character in a dream expecting to be able to wake up and know what it's like to be awake and not dreaming anymore. Do you get that? They don't kind of. It's the same thing. I mean, there's a the only difference from what I've come to understand between a sleeping dream and the waking dream is in the sleeping dream, there is no time and space. And in this waking dream, we have the appearance of time and space. Right? Simpler yeah, than it's that. Really, it's it's kind so of, much simpler than that, honey. Yeah. It's so much simpler than that. Can you see <coughs> the absurdity? of the dreamed character in a dream whilst your body's lying on the bed asleep oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah. can you see the abs happening. can you see the absurdity of that character wanting and expecting to be able to experience being awake mm. up off the bed no generally not it's he not that no the dream character is not even real. Yeah. It's not. It's fiction. And now else has no idea that it's dreaming most of the time. So, Unless it's, we're it's, talking about the lucid dreaming. And so it's, it's fiction. fiction. Yeah, but I that's that's the so dream fine. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The maze dream as well. That's, right. that's the point. That's the point that I'm making. Okay. <laughs> and the other yeah, thing yeah. too is, I want you to consider this, all right? When you're asleep on the bed and you're dreaming, and somebody comes in the room to wake you up, who do you think they're speaking to? The character in the dream or the presence in the body that's lying on the bed? The presence in the body that's lying on the bed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, when Bob says, I'm not speaking to anybody, that's exactly what he's talking about. He's, right, he's speaking to the presence in the body that's sitting in the chair. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to slam it into a body, okay. okay. If you want to slam it into a body, yeah, okay, you can do that. Okay. Bob wanted to say something to yeah. you. Yeah. And the second was quite simply, he says, "You're dreaming a dream you call the world, yeah. and stop looking for ways out." And that's what we're doing. This is a dream. We don't realise it. When we're looking for ways out, we're going to become enlightened. Come on. He says the dream is not your concern. Your concern is that you love one part and not another, and trying to get out. Who's trying to get out? The dreamed-up character that thinks it's going to, Jerry says it's going to wake him. Love one part or another. He says leave, love all of it or none of it. Don't try and get out of it, no. And the rest will be done for you by that same essence 
that formed the body, formed the dream, formed everything else that's looking after you right now. But to think we're going to become enlightened in this dream, we become realised, come enlightened, come happy. I wonder why it doesn't happen, because this is in the dream as well. And there's no one to become enlightened. Mm. Well, again, going back to the dream character, can that mm -hmm. been pointed out there, but can that do anything? So what's been spoken to is the sense of presence, not Julie. Julie is just a label. Not, not the. Not, not, the, uh, not, not the personality, not, not the mind, not the story. It's not a com the body. it's an absolute dreamed character. Mm -hmm. Same as in the dream. Yep. That's why I keep using that analogy. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you can see the absurdity of the character in your dream when you're asleep, somehow when the body awakes, that that dreamed character is gonna know what it's like to be awake, you must be able to see the absurdity in that. No, it's a dreamed I get, character. I get it, I get it. Right, apply the exact same thing to this Julie that you think is sitting in the chair and travels here and has got kids and does this and is coming to Bob's and trying to seek and trying to learn, and writing books and all that stuff is the dreamed character. All of it. Yes. Right. So there's no body or there's no persons or personal self <coughs> that arrives here in this room and gets to listen to Bob and gets anything. Nothing. Right. Okay. And what Bob's talking to is that sense of presence, that awareness. And until we see that, we think he's talking to me. And there is no me. Right. And this, it's, it's why it, it, gets, it can get really, really kind of, you wrestle with it. You, you, literally, you wrestle with it until you actually see. And if you can see the simplicity of that analogy that I'm using or pointing to in relation to the dreamed character in your sleep when you are dreaming, and that character in that dream, expecting to be able to wake up from that dream and know what it's like to be awake. The character just goes poof and it's gone. Sometimes, sometimes, as Kat has shared, sometimes the character that you're dreaming in the dream, for, for you, let's say, is a male. You're a male in the dream. Like... Hello. So that male character in the dream is going to wake up and know what it's like to be awake. As soon as you wake up from that dream, as soon as you wake up from that dream, it completely loses its power and its reality. And disappears. You, and, dis and disappears. You know what it was. Oh, Thank fuck for that. That was just a dream. Now wake up from this one. Because the exact same, and I mean exact, same thing is happening. The sleeping dream and the waking dream. <laughs> oh my god. Put it on I'm silent. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Oh my god. I can explain. <laughs> I just want to know. I, I just want to know if you're feeling embarrassed. I am. Great. So that's that's in the dream. That's just that's the character. That's yeah. just in the dream. It'd be like the character in your dream experiencing embarrassment. Just a wee bit. I'll let it go. So. Who will let it go? Nobody. It'll just happen. Julie. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Julia, sorry. Julia. I always call you Julie. Just don't call me. Just don't call me. Yeah, morning. yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Mm. No. That that's been spoken to and that that awakens is that oneness. Mm. <clears throat> Not you. Yeah. Okay. And that oneness, you can call it oneness, can't I? That oneness is completely, 100% responsible 
for dreaming you. Yes. So it's that oneness that is being spoken to that awakens to itself. That presence, that awareness of you. I understand this. Well, well, there's there's something to say. Well, when this doesn't oh, say itself, the sees itself as myself. Mm. Oh. Myself. My car, my house, you know, you're not to go myself. And that's what it's all about. We're all seeking self liberation, self realization, self understanding. But we've taken this personal self to be real. Mm -hmm. But there never was a personal self. Mm -hmm. So it's that self that is realized. It's that self is liberated. It's that self that is knowing. It's the one self expressing as everything. Can you be anything other than that? <laughs> I'm hesitant to say really anything because I'm I, I feel kind of dumb every time I do. Yeah. Um, now now how does that feeling dumb sits with the you know like who's feeling dumb? Is that nobody, life? No, but it's no, just no, no, a dumbness feeling happening. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. I mean, <laughs> look at this. This is this is really a, this is a great invitation because you know and it, like like Teddy was pointing out that oh you're feeling embarrassed now. Fantastic. Are you feeling dumb? Oh, fantastic. Because now there is an opportunity to see that the dumbness or the embarrassment is just a character in a movie, yeah. actor, yeah. and you are the one who is knowing about it. You are the knowingness about the embarrassment and about the shame or dumbness or whatever. And this doesn't touch you. Right. Who you are right. is not embarrassed and is not dumb. You are the pure knowing, awareing consciousness. And Julia is none of your concern. It doesn't matter that Julia looks better or smarter or wiser than Robin or anyone else. No, it doesn't, because Robin and Julia are all within you. A week and a half ago, I was in a courthouse in New York, and there was some drama going on. And I, I felt good that I was able to, as it was all happening, mm -hmm. to be able to sit and watch the play unfold, yes. but not be yes. the player, mm -hmm. okay? So, to many, I mean, I feel like I, there's, you know, I mean, like I have that experience. I was able to do that in the moment, and it was dramatic, mm. okay? Because if you want to get into dramatic stories, there was lawyers saying, that's not true, and it was dramatic, and I was just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is dramatic, you know, yeah. and be able to see it there instead of going into the story world of saying, oh, my God, this is happening to me, you know. So this has happened before having said that to nobody. Of course, it's not happening to anybody, and I feel like I have an understanding that there's absolutely nobody here. It never has been. There was a thought there was a me, mm -hmm. and I thought there was a me, and I believed there was a me. I believed I was this this body mind entity and 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 I know I'm not and I feel like for the most part I absolutely know there is there is that that's just a a story it's a thought and that's it's not what I am it's just a thought that comes up right wonderful and then something like you remember back in November mm -hmm. when I was in Russia yes and I thought before I went to Russia, I thought I got this down. I know this non-duality stuff. There's no me. Yep, 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 yep. And then I go with Patch, and I get upset because I was offended. He's judging you. There was yeah. a judgment, and I was being judged. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I and I I noticed it later. You know that there was some selfing happening. But in the moment, I didn't realize. And I thought before that, oh, I got this down. So there's. Mm -hmm. I feel like okay. I might think I have this down. But who has but this down? Nobody. There's nobody to have any of this down. And there's and and, and I, I thought earlier, mm -hmm. I mean, as you were talking, you were saying to me, so how is this different from Bob? There was no difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would have been maybe a better answer mm -hmm. to say he's got more experience. There is no him and there's no me. Mm. Okay. There's this is all a story, so there is no difference. 
Okay. But see, the problem isn't the best answer. Yes, the answer would be better if you would say that. Like it, it would that, be that was like coming would up be in the more moment spontaneously. And yeah, it, it thought it, about. Exactly. It right. would be kind of more correct, but who cares what is correct or what's not correct, you know? This is about being completely practical about it. If there is any selfing going on, it means the investigation has to go on. And if I say, I've got it done, I've got it right, I understand it, investigation is, needs to keep happening. Oh, yeah, and I do that every time I catch myself saying, oh, I got it, because I yes. realize there's a me to get it. Exactly. And, I, and if there's a me to get it, then I don't get it. That's okay. right. I'm fucked. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, it. You don't get it. What question is? There's. I'm nothing. If there's nothing, there's nothing. Well, I, wait, well, wait, I put I the nothing get, on it. No, what is there? Let me think about this first. Well, I put the nothing on it. You are, aren't you? I am. I'm right. A, but I'm also everything. You are. I am that. I am that. Yes. It's not nothing or nobody. I am that. What's that mean? I'm everything. Yes, I'm totality. a totality. I'm a totality. We'll start from that. How far can you go from that? Can't be any more than that. Oh, well, yeah, but before we had it, it can't be. We realise that before that we try to become something. And becoming is not being. Before I met you, I was talking to a guy named Robert Wolf, who was another non duality teacher. And he said to me, you seem to have down that you're everything. What you need to do is see that you're nothing. You need to die before you die. <laughs> okay. So I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> the metaphor that you use of intelligence energy for me has been tremendous. To see that I'm everything, that I'm the totality. Because if we strip that down, it really fits in with my idea of, or the one that I'd learned somewhere, it wasn't my idea, but it fit in with the idea of truth is that which never changes. And what's never changed is the stillness between the, the movement in that intelligence energy that I am, that you are, that everything, this chair, everything is. And that's how I'm everything, I'm the totality. Notice how you fit ideas. Because this is non conceptual. <laughs> I know, but I love this concept. I know. It's just what not. It's just the there's no the me to love stop. it, I guess. It's just mm. the experience of the full stop. So as long as you got the experience of the full stop, even if chat is happening, that's it. That is, that's, that's the experience of that. And that's it. Yep. Julie, where are you stuck? Where am I stuck? It's Julia, Terry. Oh, God. Thank you. Julia. <laughs> Just don't call me early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, cool. Where are you stuck? You tell me. No, no. You tell me. <laughs> Where am I stuck? Where are you? Like, you've got the patter down. Okay. You got the patter down. Okay? Yeah. But you'll be the first to acknowledge. I'm still dreaming. I'm not awake. The only thing that I feel like, if, there's, if you ask me, you want me to answer that question, the only place where I feel like I'm still so stuck is there's a shitload of thoughts still happening okay a lot a lot a lot and I will do my best frequently not all as whenever the thought comes up it has to come up in order for me to remember to do that but just to be without a thought and drive my car without the, the constant chit chat and not to, to let the chit chat fall away and then a fucking thought will come up again and I'll see that thought and then often follow that train of thought there's not me doing any of this never has been and it's not me remembering to just be quiet. And, it and feels there's not like me you. understanding it. It's and it feels like that to you, right? It just feels, bam, you came out of nowhere. It feels like it just came, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you are walking a lot of talk, you're talking, but people might not be getting that. What? You are, you are experiencing it just like nothing, but people might interpret you, are oh, you just saying that? But, you know, if you are, well, that's popped out of nowhere. You are experiencing it too. And I think people can often have a filter of just, oh, that sounds heady, that's just from the head. So I'm just saying that, yeah, it sounds like, there, yeah, there were lots of moments where, well, yeah, but just, just, yeah, it really does feel to you like a, enough number of times, it's just happening. That's yeah. That's great, that's great, that's it, yeah, that's one of the it's, yeah. <laughs> so they, if you ask where I'm stuck, that's it, it's just that I feel like, okay, well, th there's nothing I can do, right? I'm fucked. Right? There's no me. I've never done anything. I'm not the one coming up with the thoughts, and I'm not the one stopping the thoughts. Okay? The, nobody. It's not. It's everybody.
everybody. It's everything. Everything's doing it and nothing's doing it. It's, it's the intelligence energy that's doing everything, always has. And what's the intelligence energy breaking it down? If we break it down as the stillness and the emptiness and the quiet and the space and the uh, beingness without energy? a word, what before the words. What is energy? What is energy? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a vibration. Oh, yeah, it's an activity. Right. And what? And what's the, what's the intelligence? It's knowing. Knowing. The activity of knowing. Isn't that going on right now? Yes. Always? Always. Well. <laughs> you can't say so. Not knowing is a form of knowing. You're knowing that you're not knowing. Yes. So knowing is happening all the time. You can be, there can be an awareness of knowing that thinking's going on, which is different from not knowing that it's going on. You're just lost in it. But there can arise a knowing that, shit, thinking, look at all this thinking. Yeah. An awareness that the thinking is, is that without a need to stop it, mm. There can just be a rise in awareness of it. And to me, <coughs> uh, well, who doesn't exist, but that, that's a different feeling state, the different feeling state, mm. that when there's an awareness of, bloody hell, look what my mind's been doing, mm. without necessarily thinking, oh, I should have stopped all that. And then there's a way full stop where there's just nothing about anything. Full stop, yeah, that's the best. Nothing about anything. Yeah. Full stop, mm -hmm. don't go there. Mm. Not even don't go there, it's just nothing about anything. It's just there for it. There's just simply nothing. Mm. No thinking, so nothing is made of anything. And it's, yeah, and it's clear as a bell. No matter how short it is, nothing was made of anything. The knowing. Because nothing's come to mind, because there's been nothing processed. <laughs> Doesn't the come to mind. Nothing knowing. can come to mind. Nothing just comes to mind because there's been no process, and it's not a, a you know it's not a logical thought about there's been no process. It's just nothing clear. There's mm. nothing arising up to be said, you know. Mm. Julie, mm -hmm. I heard where you're stuck. Uh oh. I heard where you're stuck. You didn't hear it because you're still talking from it, from that sense of me. Right. But I heard it. I hope you hear it when you, if you get the opportunity to listen to this back. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> There's still a Julie there that is observing thoughts, observing action, observing non-action, observing understanding, observing getting it, not getting it, Observing a busy mind. Right. So what you're still doing is you're still looking at all the content, which includes knowledge of this understanding, as opposed to going deeper, because it's much closer. That little me that's there is much closer. And I just heard it speaking. I heard it speaking. That <laughs> false sense of, of me, I just heard it speaking. When you hear this back, you should be able to see it and hear it. And I'll be really embarrassed later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Look, look, my experience, I went through the same shit, exactly the same, like exactly the same. And, you know, I, I got to be able to, you know, even if I was questioned, you know, it was like I could give the patter, could totally give it. Yeah, of course I'm nothing. Of course I see I'm not the body. Of course I know I'm everything. Right. Of course I know I'm nothing. You know, right. I know I'm not here. Oh, I know Julie's not doing anything. Right. Yeah? Right. But there was always still an I there making all those fucking statements. Right. That's the me. Right. That you need to find. It's really close, Julie. It's really close. 
you're still looking in or at the basic, the basic screen of, of thought that all the content appears in. You're still there, but there's still a Julie there that's seeing all that. Because if that Julie uh? wasn't Julia, <laughs> well, Julia, if that Julia wasn't there and aware of all that, you'd be awake, completely awake. So what, I'm trying, to, what I'm trying to say is it's... Is she it's, there when she's not thinking? No. So what I'm trying to say is it's really, really, really close. In my experience, I got used to seeing the content of thought that would happen for Terry. I got used to seeing that. And part of that content that I was seeing and was aware of was even answers to stuff I'd heard in relation to non-duality. All that was in there. Yeah. What was also in there were things like um, you're useless, you'll never get this low self-esteem stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Victim stuff, shame stuff. That was also in the content. Yeah, <clears throat> And all that content was still referring to a supposed me it's gonna get it that's, get that's it. present and the difference I'm trying to describe the difference okay between being aware of all the content of thought okay and that's still that that tight contracted sense of me that still seems to be there even though I know all this shit I know I'm not I know I'm nothing I'm not blah, 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 blah. but the truth is I still feel like I'm here what I noticed for myself was that that um, really, really, really close, God, that really close sense of me, the dialogue that used to happen from that really close sense of me didn't appear in the content. It appeared kind of back here. And I didn't notice it. I wasn't aware of it. It wasn't until I really saw what was going on. I saw what was going on. Then I went, okay, you little fucker, where are you? Like, seriously, where are you? <laughs> Had to look. Where, where are you? I know you're not in there. I know you're not in all the content, all those thoughts and all that noise and conditioning and ideas and beliefs. And I know you're not in there. Mm -hmm. After all, I know you're not in there because I'm, I'm aware what you are you looking for, though, when you're, when you're talking about that? Bigger button. Which you are you looking for when you're talking about that? That that believed it was aware of content. The witness. The witness. Mm -hmm. So instead of the witnessing, it was the witness and seeing the content. Yep. And there's still... Tricky little fucker. Correct. Yeah. And, there's, <laughs> and, there's, and there's still... There's still, <laughs> Julia... There's still a witness -er there. And what I'm trying to point out at the moment is, it's, look, it's a natural process to kind of filter out and, and see all the content and get to understand all the experiences and all the memories and the belief systems and all the stuff in relation to this so-called me. And can I say something to that? Uh, I heard this great story last night and it was just about you know the cliffs of moor, you know, or the, or the beautiful cliffs that um, you see a cliff face, right? And years and years and years the cliff face is eroded by wind and rain and the ocean crashing and, and you see that some of the cliff falls off a little bit and bit more falls off a little bit, bit more falls off a little bit. Millions of years later, all of a sudden the cliff just goes bang into the sea, right? And that's sort of what happens with the me. It's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. It just goes bang. It just goes bang. So, uh, so that's, that's right now where um, I'm, I'm a little bit 
you have to discern the difference between the witnesser and witnessing. Okay. Absolutely, there's witnessing going on. Right. No yeah. ifs or buts about that. Right, but there's nobody to witness it. Yeah, but you, mm. yes, but you haven't I'm seen still that. Saying it from a concept. Yeah, you're just, you just, you just haven't had a. You said yes. <laughs> you haven't had a. <laughs> you haven't had a close enough look. <laughs> Only because we all did it too. Yeah. That's why we're saying yes. And we all did that too. And you have to under. Yeah. Look, you have to try and look for. That really close, tight, mm. personal me. Try and look for where does the dialogue, where is the dialogue of it? You start, you should start to become aware that it's much clo it's much closer than the content of thought. Ride the wave, Nasagadatta <coughs> said. The breath, the wave of the breath, that's how close it is. And we don't even, we're not, we're not even aware of it, Julia. We're, we're not even aware of it. When I started to become aware of it, it's like, whoa, okay. Why didn't I see that in the first fucking place? <laughs> Why did I have to go through all this other shit to finally get to, oh, there it is. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> but, but it was more, it, it was more, it was more, um, a curiosity that came up. It's like, more like, how the fuck did I miss that? How did I miss that? And the reason I missed it is because it's so close. Yeah, why should it take the infinite long to find the infinite? There's no such thing as time, huh? When it happens, it's all gone. No, it's, it's just a dream. Just like so, a bang. So that's, that's just a it's concept. It's not finite. It's just a concept that just floated through then, aren't you? I, I should have already known it. I should have never forgotten if I'm infinite, I should have just already known that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Julia, you're being dreamed so that by the infinite, so the infinite can experience the so-called Julia. Well, wouldn't you want to? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I already am. I know. I already am experiencing that. What, Julia? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And Kat and Bob. Jane, Rob, Tony, Tony. Come and so you are you. Chris. Chris. Mm -hmm. So are you. The whole universe appears in you. You are the awareness. Mm. 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 If there's only one, <laughs> if there's only one, you know, like, come on. If there's what? only one, there's no room for you. Mm. I'm sorry. Or me. Right. There's no room. And this is about non-duality, which means one without a second, if you like. <coughs> it's about that. Bob so has... this is all just an illusion. It's all just an illusion. You want to say something, Bob? Yeah, even the idea of a witness and witnessing is an illusion too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what's the witness? What's the witness? Yeah. Just a concept you've got in there that's hanging on to it. Mm. It's always the ing. Mm. Put the ing on the end. Mm -hmm. So how, how is that different from the knowing? You often talk about knowing. Yeah. Is, you say, it, is, is anyone here not, Unaware. not seeing or hearing? Mm. And we all are. And so I think you're suggesting there is knowing, kind mm. of knowing. That you are. And yeah. I guess what people are saying is that is completely different from witnessing the thought. Is that right? What one has thought going on, and the knowing uh, is no thought. Is that right, Bob? It's just well, you put a thought on it as a concept. You put it. Yeah. But knowing is just the same as awareing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and you put the label know. witness on if you like, but there's no witness on it. No, right. Just more labels we've got. Mm. Try to just... Things coming up about anything. There's, there's no meaning making happening. Mm. And look, the, the, the reality is, those questions that are currently arising for you, the answer only comes up or is realised when you're absent. 
when it, you're seen to be what you actually are. <laughs> That's right. And it's all right, you know, for the, for the questions. Yeah. To totally, totally right for the. But some of them um, can't be answered. Can't. It's like Bob uses the analogy. You know, I can, I can sit here and describe to you all day what it, what it's like to sip a glass of water. And if you've never sipped that glass of water, I can give you thousands. I can sit here till you know, for the next six years, trying to describe to you what water tastes like. But until you sip it, all you're going to have is just a, my conceptual idea of it that I'm trying to impart to you. Mm. Mm. But having said that, that, Terry's concept of no room can actually be experienced. A sensation's <coughs> coming up, then another one, then another one, then another one. Then in, don't, nothing happens, nothing, no meaning happens about anything that just happened in the moment before. <coughs> just do, it doesn't. There's just no room. <laughs> For you in there, there's no room for anything because no meaning happened. It's just another thing came, another thing came. Yeah, mm. So long as that's, and for me, it's just in and out, in and out, in and out. So, in that whole thing, just then, mostly, there was one moment where a meaning did happen, a tiny quick one, and a whole bunch where nothing happened. You know, no meaning making happened. Uh, yeah, it's just like, so, in and out, and in and out, and in and out here. But, so it doesn't have to be just the big bang, it can be the little incredible, you know, different, it can be different. But um, at the end of the day, you know, nothing, if nothing's made of the moment before. No assessment, commentary, comparison. Nothing occurs to make anything of it. No processing happens. Then you do just get the experience, 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 experience and there's no room for any kind of conceptual thing because it's just not showing. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, and it's, it's also very important to actually be able to acknowledge that moment because this is really when you build up the confidence, when you realize that uh, most of the Might time, you get <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working that way. <laughs> most of the time, there is really nobody there. You know, you, there is nobody there when you are sleeping or and not dreaming. There is nobody there when you are cooking, or when you are busy reading book, watching TV. Driving car, whatever. There is the the uh, the eye comes usually with the problem, like you know, it gives itself away in a funny way, like you know, ah oh, yeah, it fits in with my definition. Oh yeah, yeah, that I like this, I don't like this one. You know, this explanation is good. This is, you know, this is kind of like that that uh, what um, Sin Ming says, the preferences hold no preferences. They come up and they give away that me a little bit. But if it is recognized right away, there is no me in it, it's just a preference, just bland, dead preference. But when there is an investment, that little fat or that little flavor, extra flavor of being personal, being mine, being separate, diff like dear to my heart, that is when that seeming individual is hiding. But the moment it is recognized that, oh, yeah, wow, that felt personal. Yeah, like, you know, all the answers. Oh, and they go so quickly. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm everything. I'm that. I'm that. You know, like, I'm totality. You know, whatever Bob says, you know, all the answers. And now, brilliant, beautiful. But really, the knowing doesn't really need the answers. It doesn't have questions. It doesn't need reassurance. It's not an exam. Like, you know, if somebody asks you questions and the, the feeling comes in like, oh, yeah, I've got to give them the right answer. Otherwise, they will despise me or they will think bad of me or I will disappoint them. I don't want to do that. You know, or I I'm want them stupid. to like me. Yeah. Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, I want them to like me. And especially Bob. I don't want to disappoint Bob. Of course, I'm going to drop all these answers at him because I know and I'm going to use his words because then he'll be happy. No, he won't. He will be very... <laughs> <laughs> He won't because he will hear the frequency of the exam. Yes, you are a student. You're the best. <laughs> you're brilliant because you're intelligent and you're sweet and you're loving and you, oh gosh, we love you beyond measure. But yes, we love you beyond measure. And that's why he wants to slap you in the face occasionally <laughs> because in that love, he knows there is further to go. You don't want to, he doesn't want you to be an A student because that's really. Once we graduate. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to graduate too. Yeah. So, so just you know, like, don't be afraid of disappointing him. I'm talking, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. I'm taking a chance. Yeah. And I'm probably going to disappoint. And, and you might slap me across the face. Oh, great. But I'll keep coming back. Yeah. For more. <laughs> Ernest. Ernest. Yeah. Cool. And you're going to be loved because we know who you are. We don't really see Julia anymore because, well, we, we, we see the character. It's a beautiful character. It's a sweet character because, you know, they are, they, they are nasty characters too. <laughs> being, yeah. knowing, and loving to be. Can you separate the being from the knowing? Or the knowing from the being? And in those two, there is a love of being, the bliss of being. That's such an end. And that's what I tell you. I am that. That is what you are. Stop being right now. Yes. Stop knowing right now. I can't. Don't you love to be right now? Yes. I'll shout loudly, I am that already. I am that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be anything but that. Yeah. That is all there is. That's right. There's nothing other than that. That's the tripod, that's the camera for the phone, mm. that's you, that's me. It's all that we've put labels on which we've learned or acquired. And yes, there is a logic, you know, the way Bob is explaining it. That's the tripod, that's the camera, everything is that. We could see logically that in our language, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, yeah, I get it. It makes sense. But again, logic can be helpful in the beginning. But this is really not about logic. No, the this knowing. Is pre- knowing. This is what exactly. I am before the words, before the thought, before yes. the I. That's what I am. Before and with, the anything. And without the logic, even if it wasn't okay, logical. Good, I got, I got, you're getting closer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of all those things, if you just go that, 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 you just got the experience of that. There's no room for anything to be made of it because you're so busy going that, 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 and feeling what it's like. <laughs> Julie, yeah, yeah, that's cool. See, see what it's like. Try and give this a shot. See what it's like when you only give an answer to something that you know to be an absolute fact. And anything that you don't know to be an absolute fact, say, I don't know. Oh, I'm really good at that. Oh, really? Saying I don't know? Well, you're really good at giving all the right answers. Really good at that. So what, I'm also what good are at saying you? I don't know. What are you? Good. good yeah, good. just my, answer that one. What my, are you? My point, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, try it. Just, what am I? Mm. What are you? Yes. Because I don't know. You, you already given few answers to it. Now you're giving the right answer. Now you're giving the, the true. <laughs> now you're yeah. being honest. <laughs> yes. Now you're being real. You're not everything. You're not nothing. You're not that. You're not the absolute. You're not the totality. Mm-hmm. Those are all labels. You're none of it. You don't know. I don't know. Bob doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Terry doesn't know. We all not know. We have no fucking clue what you we stop are. Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you basically stop thinking. That's what you did. You stop making anything. Yeah. So, whilst you're giving all the right answers, whilst you're giving all the right answers, and yet you still, and yet you still actually really don't know, you're going to try and look for other answers. You're going to think there's something I've missed, as opposed to just being with I don't fucking know. Do you know you're not the body? Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. See what I mean? Yeah? Yeah? At if least you, you absolutely sometimes. Yeah? <laughs> well, do, do, you know, I feel like at least I've had that experience of, no, man, like when, like when I saw my father's corpse. Honey, Julia. That's proof. Julia. But how said Julia, that? it's a pointer. I'm just pointing. Don't take it absolutely literally, okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Okay? okay? But come back to what you actually really know. Not the correct answers. Please, not the correct answers. 
It will get you. No, you'll just fucking spin around and around and around and around and you'll stay in the same spot. I'm telling you. Cause the only thing I can know is just that I am. There you go. Good enough. Yeah. And what do you do then? B. <laughs> what does that involve? See how much see how much simpler it gets. Can you see how much simpler it gets? And how much closer you actually are to the truth. When you talk from your current your current direct experience, then it's real. All the other stuff is fluff, man. Story. It's just fluff. And it's okay. Because the fact is, everyone goes through that. It's okay. You but, went through but, that, Bob? Pardon? You went through that? Went through everything. <laughs> <laughs> More than once. Yeah. And eventually... Uh, isn't there a, oh, a knowing that you don't know? Yeah. Damn, when you say, I don't know, you must prove a knowing the state of knowing to say it. Yeah, you have to know to not know. Yeah, well, that's the being, knowing, and loving to be again. It's the same, isn't it? <laughs> it's so beautiful not knowing, Julia. Mm. It's so beautiful. It is. Given all the, you know, <laughs> it's just so fucking liberating when you come to. Such a relief. I don't know. And that's totally right. And you know what? At least I know that I don't know. Oh. Yeah. And I don't need to know and I yeah. don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like because who, who needs to know? <laughs> just, just, just for you and, and the experience that I've had with you and when we've been alone also, all I would be pointing at at this point in time is to just be real. What I mean by that is be honest, really, really fucking honest. If you don't know, so you don't fucking know. You know, it's, it's one thing to sit here and say, yeah, I know I'm not the body. But if you don't fucking know that, you're stuck. You're going to stay stuck. You will absolutely stay stuck. You get me? you got to know You've got to know. You have to have seen. Then you can, then you can say that. Yeah, I'm not the body. Or, you understand? It's got to be from your direct experience. Otherwise, you'll stay stuck. I guarantee it. You'll stay stuck. And then generally what happens, if that occurs, you'll experience some pretty deep, shitty fucking pain somewhere along the way. And, and that pain might just be associated with, I've been doing this for so long and I just can't fucking get it. What? And that can be painful. If you do it long enough, that could be painful. But you don't have to go down there. You really don't have to go down there. Just start being fucking honest. And I'm not saying for one second, I'm not talking to Julia. I'm not saying that Julia is a dishonest person. I'm so not. I think you'd be extraordinarily honest. But I'm talking about self-honesty. Not what comes out of your mouth in relation to others and your behaviour and how you're acting, your morals and ethics. And I'm not talking about that at all. But from your direct, your direct experience, get honest. There, and if you do that and you reside there, when you do get a chance to spend time with Bob, he'll be able to get through. Because you're showing who you are. You're showing. Rather than fluffing it all over with, yeah, I know I'm not this, I know I'm not that, I know I'm that, and I know I am that. And, fuck it, there's nowhere to go. Do you, do you understand? You with me? I'm doing my best. Cool. <laughs> That's honest. That's honest. You've got to come back to that. You've really, really got to come back to that. 
have to come back to that. Otherwise, <coughs> you'll stay stuck. This feels like an intervention. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't I mean... I the whole room jumping on Yeah, I don't... Oh, wonderful. Mean. You must be really loved. Feels a bit like insult. Just, just... Feels like an assault. Just, just, just assume... That's what I mean. <laughs> just assume that this is exactly what needed to happen. Just go yeah, with that. I know that. Yeah. That that's something so, I feel. I really have a. I have, or in my experience, nothing could be different than what it is. Beautiful. It can't. Yeah. It so can't be. so it's not an intervention. It's not an assault. It's not an attack. It's none of this. No, but it's just like it's just kind of. I'm saying it's just. It's purely a pointer. No, but it's beautiful, and yeah. and I'm grateful. Yeah. And I love you all. And this what's bringing this is what brings me back here. Is like I'm in this room full of Buddhas, and I'm one of you. <laughs> I love you all so much. You had the whole room jumping on you. Could you care less? <laughs> no. And then that you let Patch put all the shit on you and believed it for a while. Sorry. Then you let Patch put all the shit on you and you believed it for a while. Yeah, I did. I did. That was that was a year ago. Yeah. Well, you've changed. I think I've grown a little since then, yeah. I hope. Definitely. Definitely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said what, what, what just came out of me wouldn't have come out otherwise. No way. No way. You kind of need to hear this. You, you, you need to hear this because you're just going to... You're just gonna get stuck. No, it's good that we're recording this, so I can like listen to it on yeah. the loop and yeah. <laughs> and and Julia, I'm I am speaking from my own experience, and because I'm speaking from my own experience, it's really really easy for me to see it happening in someone else. That's right. So easy. I go, yep, know that. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's okay. Like, it's totally okay. In fact, it's awesome. It is. Perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. But that's my, that, that's been my experience, at least lately. Like, even the drama with the courtroom, you know, like, it's all perfect. You know, my, the, my crazy relatives are relative. I won't mention names. <laughs> Okay. Not it's perfect. <laughs> Especially not on camera. <laughs> my my crazy self. Or whatever. Whatever this the, this dreaming is perfect. Just what just on that just really quickly. Just on that. Mm. Okay. Try and say this. Um describe yourself to me. Describe it. Um what do you mean? What comes up? Describe yourself. That's what came up. Is I don't know what you mean by describing myself. So, like, my my ultimate self, or describe Julia. Either. I can't describe the ultimate self. But Julia, I could give you lots of descriptions for. <laughs> Julia, is Julia herself? Julia is not myself. Then what are you talking about? Did you hear what you just said? I but Julia, <laughs> I could give lots of description. There is no Julia. Julia doesn't have a self. Julia is a memory. Mm. You means you have about yourself. And what you said about... The ultimate self, you're right, you can't describe that. Mm. Totally cannot. You cannot describe that. But generally when you ask somebody, Robert had the experience of that, when you ask somebody, describe yourself. They go, oh, well, you know, I was, my name's Blah, I was born such and such a time, right. went to such and such a school, couple of kids, married twice, ten times, whatever the, the case may be. But that's not the question I asked. Try and discern the difference. So describe yourself. This me self that you believe yourself to be. Describe the self. Describe it. Time is it? 
Yes, um, over time. Oh, okay. Over time, yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, okay. Maybe. Ian is very nice deadlines. Yeah, so. Maybe I'll drop this off next time. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe it'll happen tonight.